Alright, so I just got my camera out, and it's kind of uh, it's super muggy out here. My lens is fogging up again. I would have had it sitting outside, but I wasn't necessarily planning to film this. Because I've done plenty of how-tos on, on the trap train and the birds. But I just thought I'd come out here and show you all how badly this is going. I mean, it's not going that badly. The pigeons are doing okay. But, but I literally have... Where did she go? Christo, my banny chicken has been up here on top of the building trying to fight these pigeons. This is only the second time they've ever come out of here, and the first time didn't go all that great either. See, there's Christo. It's fogging up so bad. This is not... This, I don't even know what I'm going to do about this camera lens, but it's fogging up so bad. It is super muggy. It's probably like 100% humidity out here. I don't know. Anyways, Christo is trying to fight them. So the one place where I want them to stay, and I want them to feel comfortable sitting, there's a chicken jumping on top of them and trying to beat them up. And then I don't know if you can hear that sound. It's kind of a... Uh, ta sound coming up from up above me. But those are either swallows or swifts. I don't really know which. They look the same to me. Anyways, um, they have been dive bombing the pigeons when they try and fly around. And I've even had some hummingbirds attacking the pigeons while they're flying around. So, I mean, it could be way worse. Like, there could be a hawk out here trying to eat them or something. But, but I just wanted to show you all my luck that I've let them out this evening and I have my chicken trying to attack them on the loft. And when they fly around, I have, I think the chimney swifts. Chimney swifts. It could be some kind of swallow, but we're just going to say chimney swift. I've got my chicken attacking them on top of the loft, which I can't get to come down because it's not hungry. And I've got, and I don't want to try and chase it off because I'll just chase the pigeons off instead. And I've got chimney swifts and hummingbirds attacking them when they fly. So, you know, that's just great. I'll keep the camera out here for too much longer. The lens will warm up and not be fogging up so bad. But it's actually not that cold, uh, the lens, and it's still doing this. So, oh, so I can't tell if this is really looking that blurry or if the screen on the back of my camera that I'm looking at is just blurry. But I got Christo to come down off the off the loft, so. At least that's one problem dealt with, unless she flies back up there. Krista's a cool chicken, though. Love having her. The pigeons are looking a little bit fidgety, but I think it's just that when I called Christo down and opened the building door, Cookie and that pig other pigeon, which has yet to be named, also both flew down. Man, this is annoying. I'm sure it's even more annoying for y'all. Anyways, they both flew over, and them flying real all of a sudden kind of spooked a couple of the other homers, but but it's okay. They're all right here, and they're all accounted for. Um, with both droppers and both of them out, which there are, there should be 12, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I don't know if I could see that dropper before. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up there. 7 and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I can see all 12 of them. Of course, these guys are not going anywhere. But when I get this uploaded, seriously, that one needs a name. And, I mean, technically they're still for sale, but no one's bought them yet. So, yeah, I don't I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. So they should pretty much be here to stay. <laughs> that homer was going fast. So, here, go bring them down. Actually, he, she, whatever flew up really high just a little while ago. I had never seen them fly that high. I mean, I've seen pigeons fly that high, but I've never seen this this one or its sibling, Cookie. I've never seen either one of them fly that high. I mean, it was way up there, and it had taken a homer up with it. Now, it brought the homer back down, too, and nothing bad happened, so I guess it actually works out pretty well because it gave the, the homer a good view of everything around here. It was one of the blue bars. I don't know which one, but it was a little bit... It made me a little bit nervous to see it take that young homer on the second time it's ever been out of the loft way up high. I mean, they were just dots with wings. So, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've seen the rollers uh, go up higher, but it, it still made me a little nervous. It's all good, though. So, one, two, three, four, and five on the ground at my feet. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's eleven. Probably one just flying around. I don't know. We count them all a moment ago, so they're all here somewhere. 
So it's late evening, no hawks have showed up, so and actually I'm not even seeing the chimney swifts any Yeah, I do I see one. I don't think this is fogged up too bad now, so maybe I can zoom in and show you. Well, I thought it was just about to come over the top of the uh, top of the uh, maple tree, but it didn't, so. Oh well. Just they're just a little bitty bird. Uh nope, those are dragonflies. Actually there's a lot of dragonflies out here. It's kinda neat. I like dragonflies. There goes one, a chimney swift, but you won't be able to see it. Too tiny. Anyway, this is probably getting a little bit boring, so I'm going to turn this off. But I just want to show you all, since it was interesting, uh, what was going on. So, they're doing pretty good. I may, I may do a little bit of a video this evening. I wasn't planning to. I wasn't planning to do another video until I, I do a really good one of switching everybody around getting the rollers moved out of the red loft to um, the gray loft and getting white birds moved into breed and I'm going to set up a couple new pairs uh, and everything. Um, I wasn't planning to do a video until I do all of that but since I've already got the camera on I might show you a couple of things. I've got some young ones in there that have turned out real nice. I've also got two that have not turned out real nice and there's something particularly interesting to that so I'll be sure to show you that. Still got my buddy here. I'm just no, oh, well, it's going to sit on my shoulder, but I don't, I don't like calling it it. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet, but it needs a name. Anyways, I also just had an egg hatch down there, one of my Damascusines. I've got two pair. I guess I've got two pair. I don't really know how old the blue checks are or what genders they are, but my blue bar pair of Damascusines, one of their eggs hatched, and uh, I've kind of got the white birds sorted out. I think I've got all cocks in here and all hens in there. It's possible that maybe one of these is a hen, but I think I've only got hens in the red loft and that was the that was the point. So I've got two what two so those two are obviously cocks right there. So and then I've also got two rollers in here and I've got got a reason for having them in there. Well there's a crow. That's a good sign. I like seeing the crows. So there it is, not focusing. Yeah, there. I like having the crows around. So they're staying on top of the loft. It actually went really, really poorly the first time I let them out. They all they got spooked and they all flew off in every which direction. Like I said, got my buddy. I I really like the way Cookie looks and everything. She's real cute, but this one's really my buddy right here. So if I have to sell one, maybe they'll buy Cookie then, because she's not. I mean, they're both really friendly, but. But this one, of course, is always like right here with me. So. But uh, there goes that ash red dropper. Goes uh, that Homer with the white flights. I could get Willie and Spot and Coco and Swift out, which I had to do last time, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. My compost pile bin is falling apart here. So that should be some good compost, though. It actually was real handy having that right there. Didn't have to walk as far to dump out fruits and vegetables and stuff. Throw pi pigeon poop in there. So, that's some good compost, but I don't know when I'll use it. But, anyways, so I may show you all some stuff this evening. I may post a video this evening. I wasn't planning to, but I may do kind of a, a little update, I guess. Alright, so. so I'm done here at this pen. Um, so my two croppers seem to have paired up, this one, that one. The brown one is actually not a full-blooded cropper. Uh, one of its parents was a satinette, but it turned out to be a cock, and it's paired up to the hen. So that's good. We'll see what happens. It looks like a cropper, right? I mean, its its neck isn't as you know poofed out, I guess, as the hen. But I don't. That may be an age thing, anyways. So there they are together. Um, these blue bars right here, I mean blue checks right here, Damascusines, I'm not sure if they're an actual pair or not. I think they are. I think that's the cock and that's the hen, but I don't know how old they are either. But I got the blue bar Damascusines. Basically, my understanding is that these are a diving pigeon. And they're getting a little uncomfortable with the ones hanging out above my head, but, but they've got a nest right here which she's not sitting on for some reason, but there's their baby. So, I'm not going to mess with it. Just show you that it exists. But they made a nest almost as soon as I put them in here. 
actually. There were already nests over here, and I kept them in this side at first, but as soon as I opened these doors, they took the pine needles out of there and uh, made a nest up in there. So, I got homers flying around. Fiddle, focus. It's like not doing the right contrast of light. Everything looks dark. Anyways, I got this come harm. So, garden's all dried up and dead for the year. We got, we got some green peppers still, but green bell peppers. But anyway, so they're doing a lot better about flying around than coming down and landing. But uh, yeah, so they're doing pretty good. Um, just realized I'm not wearing shoes took off my flip-flops and I'm not really sure where they actually are I'm gonna put them on before I go in here but I'll show you some stuff in so here. that bird is kind of high and it was pretty far out there just in case you're watching this video and you've not seen any of the videos I've done where I've actually trapped trained birds don't freak out because the pigeons that you let out are flying that far away they circle and they circle around and come right back and there's the chimney swifts again They've been, looks giant when I'm zoomed in on it, but it's actually teeny tiny, you can't even see it when I zoom out. But, uh, pigeons look small when I zoom out, you can't even see the chimney swifts. So, um, that was actually really good, uh, the way that one just landed. These young birds, a lot of times, um, just fly, like, pretty much straight into something and, like, about front flip and, you know, face plant into it, whatever it is. So, uh, that was actually pretty graceful landing. Yeah, this bird, you, you can't even see it. There we go. Zoom in. There we go. Got one of these black spread pigeons. Anyway, so don't don't freak out because they're flying that far away. I mean, you, you, you can't do anything about it anyways. You can't, you know, you can't just stop it from flying that far away. But don't, don't freak out about it. They keep doing that. You can't see that one because it just, there it is. Way out. I don't even know if you can see. It's all the way down at that end of the neighborhood. There he goes. So, I'm holding the camera with one hand. I'm real shaky. This isn't a great video. I wasn't planning to film tonight, but I'll just, I'll just show you all this. So, here it comes. I don't think you can see it with it zoomed out because it's pretty far away. But it's, it's just flying around out there. And uh, it'll, come, it'll come back. So, I actually don't know what it is doing. It looks like it's trying to land out there. I don't know why. There it is. Right there. So it'll come back over here. I'm not. I'm not even concerned about it. But just showing you. So here it comes straight for us. And it turned around. So whatever. I'm not concerned about it. It's already flown around and been sitting over here some, and it knows they're all here. And like I said, this is the second time they've been out. So clearly it, you know, didn't fly away the first time. But. It'll be back over here in a minute, but uh, but I'll take y'all in here. Now, uh, it's going to be kind of dark in here, and you're not going to be able to see real well. Uh, and that's not exactly by design, but it's kind of okay, because I really don't want y'all to get to see how cool looking some of these birds are. Oh, there's one right there. Until I actually do a real video and show you really good. But uh, I took away Swift and uh, Coco's nest. Um, I had a hen. Those blue bars, they just laid their eggs in here on the flat thing, and I just stuck their nest in here and stuck those eggs in it. And I don't know if they'll sit on them or not. It doesn't look like she is. I've, I've had them do it before, like her, she did, but uh, this one may not. Oh well, uh, she'll lay more. But um, I really wasn't necessarily planning to breed them anymore, anyways, but I may. So they've also laid more egg. Well, she laid one more egg. And. Uh, her babies are, well, they were right where I'm standing now. Uh, where are they? <laughs> They're down under here somewhere. Here's uh, Coco and Swift's latest, but nope, nope, this is actually the one I, what I was looking for. So, interesting, obviously nice and healthy, feathers have done real well, uh, it's a good weight. 
starting to flap around. Here's what I thought I was grabbing. That's one of Coco and Swift's babies. It's a uh, red check or red tea check. I don't know. I would say that that one's a tea check and that one's a really just a heavy check. You can you can pretty much use your own discretion, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter too much. But uh, I got them. There's a bluebar baby, which is from this nest box, which would be that blue bar cock right there, which is from Bill Saunder, and this one hen right here, blue bar hen with the orange band. She's uh, one that Rick gave me. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think they have a baby or two over there already, and I don't actually don't remember for sure. I wasn't planning on racing or flying or anything. I just they they bred out a couple babies, and I think I think they did, and they're over there. I believe so. And um, then I've got this blue check cock from Bill Saunder bred to this uh, blue check hen that I've got. I think it's a blue check. I might have called it that with a blue bar. It's a blue check. Um, bred to this hen right here. Um, doesn't look too happy that I'm pointing at her. She's got the wing twitching thing. She's ready to defend her nest. But she's got... Uh, does she have one or two? Just one. She, had, she hasn't laid the second one yet. But, uh, but yeah. And so these... Two pairs of rollers I'm not going to be breeding anymore. Um, Willie and his girlfriend sat neck. I, they can pretty much do whatever they want. Doesn't really bother me. I do want to breed her to a to a uh, another sat net though. Um, one thing is just that I think she's brown, and she's the only brown pigeon I've ever had. So I kind of want to just keep that brown going. Um, of course, I'm going to have to breed. I'm gonna have to breed a, one of her sons back to her to actually get a pigeon out that is brown, uh, or that looks brown. And I got uh, their latest baby under here. Oh, barely reached. So it turned out mostly white. I know you still can't see real well, but I don't really want to see too well. So it turned out mostly white, but it's got a little bit of blue on its tail and. Uh, most of a blue shield on its left side. So, also Angel. They've all they've knocked over their water. They actually still have some water in here in the loft, so they're not actually out yet. But uh, but I've been refilling it in the evening. Anyways, Angel is going to be being bred to Hershey's, um, which is why one of those rollers is already in the gray loft because she had made it to it. And uh, that other one was the Tiger Grizzle, the his mate. I put her over there so that he would start getting ready to accept a new mate. But I haven't paired him up in here yet because he's still feeding two of his babies down here. Where are they? One is right here. Right. Yeah, so this one is his. He's still feeding it. I guess he's still feeding it. It's eaten. To be honest, uh, the, um, the young birds from three other pairs came down to the floor at the exact same time as his. And except with the exception of that blue bar, they all look a lot alike. So there's probably two two other cockbirds down here feeding babies besides him. And so even if he's not feeding his babies real well or even at all, they're probably feeding his babies too. They're probably not. They're probably feeding just all the babies because they all look pretty much the same except for that blue bar. So uh, yeah, he's learning that Willie doesn't like him too much. But, uh, I don't know why it doesn't just move off that perch. It will in a minute. There it goes. And crisis averted. But, uh, oh, maybe she is sitting on her eggs, because, see, there she is. But, uh, or he, that's actually the cock. But, um, I don't know. Anyways, um, there's Coco and Swift, so. These two, uh, that black cock and this red check I'm going to be breeding. Um... And I'm going to breed Hershey's and Angel together. I'm going to keep breeding this pair. But then I'm going to put white homers in here and in there and there. So that'll be three pair of white homer. Uh, maybe not. I'm not sure. I could just do two for right now. I want to pair up those two satin nets. So. I don't know. We'll see. 
I'll still let them breed though. I'll, I'll probably just put a nest in here and they probably will still breed. But uh, but I'm not going to try to breed them anymore. The only reason I'm, I'm letting them is because I, I want some more blue grizzles like Swift. I don't have any other blue grizzles besides her. But there's three white birds right there. I thought there was a fourth. Yeah, there's the fourth one right there. White hen. So, so pretty much I it. know that the loft was pretty dirty. Um, and that's just because I've not been able to clean it very well because I've had birds breeding on the floor and it pretty much came down to either throw out their eggs and babies or just don't clean the loft yet and so you all know me of course for them I've pretty much just not been cleaning it you know could do more work or sorry I'm pointing the camera way up I could do more work or I could throw out pigeon eggs you know tough call there but uh but no so I'm finally getting to the point where I'm gonna be ready to clean it though and uh, I've been keeping it dry though, so it's not a big deal. Before it was not good because it was getting water in there, but that tarp's been keeping the water off. So, um, so it's, it's not a big deal. It's just a pain to look at. I'm trying to figure out if that was a pigeon or a dove. I've seen a couple of doves fly over. I think that's a pigeon. But I'm trying to figure out if it's my pigeon or not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so there should be, I guess that's, yeah, I think that's mine. I would make 11. I can say if I could see all of mine, then I'd, I'd know, but. Yeah, I guess it's mine. I don't know. It was acting a little weird. I thought maybe somebody else's homer had come over here. Which, you know, wouldn't be the first time. But, um, let's see if there's anybody else in here. You can see the homer, they're doing a lot better. They let me just walk right up to the loft and they didn't freak out, so. No, nobody in here. So, yeah. So we got three, four, there's some crows. I like the crows. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But yeah, all together this makes ten. Eleven. There's one on the roof. And then 12. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so they're all accounted for. I just, yeah, I don't know. It was acting odd. I, it's hard to describe exactly what it was doing that seemed odd besides just flying up real high and far away, but I don't know. Something about it just didn't seem quite right. Um, anyways, so I'm not sure if there's much left to show you or say. I wasn't really planning to do a video this evening, but, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I won't be able to fly them tomorrow, though. I actually don't know what my work schedule is uh, for next week yet, and I need to find that out. I, um, I usually work in the evenings, though, and I prefer to fly the birds in the evenings, so I can't fly them, let them out every day, necessarily. But, um, but I can't, I, I gotta be kind of, I don't know how much I'll actually let them out this week anyways. Yesterday was the opening season, of, opening day of dove season. And, uh, of course, today and yesterday was Saturday. So, today is Sunday, so um, even though it opened yesterday, it's not legal to hunt today. So, there shouldn't be anybody out in the fields with shotguns. But, um, but then, Monday, um, everybody, will be out, everybody will be out there again. And they've been staying real close and everything. Um, if, I'd, if I'd already been flying them, then I wouldn't be too worried about it. Because I wouldn't, wouldn't think they'd go very far. There's, but there's a pit, there's a field just across the woods here, and I'm not aware of anybody hunting it, but I just want to be careful, because I, I don't know how many of you live here, and I live in North Carolina, so I don't know how many of you live here in North Carolina or um, in the you know southeastern part of the United States, but um, morning dove season, uh, which I guess. It's, we'd say dove season. I guess it's ringneck doves too, but we don't really have ringneck doves here. But dove season starts basically a week before bow season starts. So the majority of people, as far as I'm aware, at least right around here where I live, dove hunt on like opening day and the second day because that's usually that's usually like Wednesday and I mean it's usually open it's open till Saturday. So they usually hunt like Saturday and then Monday. And then people's work schedules may keep them from doing very much dove hunting the rest of the week, 
or they might dove hunt the rest of the week. But after that first week of dove season is over, um, we would usually only hunt like the first two days. But after the first week of dove season is over, bow season starts. And so a lot more people are, um, are, are deer hunting instead of dove hunting. So plus the doves become a lot more skittish and start flying higher and faster after that. So as long as so after you get past like the first week, it's usually not nearly as big a deal. But everyone, everyone is out there on opening day and then like, you know, the first week. And you just don't, I just don't want the birds flying over the fields because, you know, if the doves aren't flying well and uh, everybody's just kind of sitting around and then the pigeons fly over, everybody starts shooting at the pigeons. So, um, so I, I just want to keep them out of harm's way. So, so uh, I don't know how, I, I don't know how much making videos I'll do this week, but, um, I wasn't planning to do one this evening anyways, but here I am. But uh, those ha letting the, some of the parents feed those babies in there is the biggest reason that I haven't switched everybody yet. So sometime this week I should get everyone switched around and uh, I'll video that. And I was thinking I would do, I would video me cleaning the loft and maybe my camera ran out of, out of memory space. I didn't realize I had so many old videos on my camera. but. Uh, so sorry for that, but what I was gonna say is I've, I've got all this old wood down here. I've got you know, this piece of plywood and everything. I've got boards and everything. I stick them under here to keep them kind of out of the weather. So I'm thinking about cutting those up, just basically making um, a square frame with them, you know, sitting like this and that, and just sitting those in there and those perches so that it's easy for the birds to make nests in them or something. Um, so. I've got plenty of stuff I can keep myself busy with this week, but uh, I'm real happy with the way the birds are doing this evening, you know? They're letting me get pretty close. I'm, I'm just standing right here. It looks further away on camera, but I'm only standing, you know, three or four feet from the loft, so. There's a homer right there. You can see they're molting. That one, the tail looked all weird and everything, but uh, I'll move I'll move those uh, red check birds over here to this loft. Um, here this sometime this week and I should have everybody flying together I don't know by next week I don't know I don't I like to I don't like to say I'm gonna do this or do that too much because with the birds you just you just never know what's gonna happen but here comes one right there who, who is this it's that one with the white flights I don't know why it keeps landing in the grass you landed in the grass over there. I don't know. I'm not gonna tell it how to live its life. Actually, I don't think that's just the one with the white flights. That's the one. That's the, that's the one that's more, more um, broken up. Um, splash. It's more of a splash. There's the one with the white flights right there. So I don't know how I feel about this one. It it looks like kind of a turkey to me, which is what some of us. Uh, right around here terminology varies you know depending on where you are but around here a lot of times we'll call a real big homer it's just real big and bulky and doesn't fly good call them a turkey this one's still pretty young but it it, it kind of in a way it, it reminds me of a turkey it's a little bit big it may just be fat because it's one of the oldest ones i've got and i've just been feeding them and not flying them so it may just be kind of fat but it, it's just it's pretty big and it keeps landing in the yard I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure it'll be just fine. But it's one I bought at the auction. But it's just. It's just a little weird how it keeps landing in the yard. It, when I let them out the first time, it let me walk up pretty close to it. Actually, it didn't go in the trap the first time I let them out. I actually just caught it out here in the grass because it just wanted to land in the grass. I, I don't know what its deal is. Let's see if I can't push it back towards the loft. Go on. Now yeah, it's just gonna fly out that direction. But oh well. I'm not not real worried about it. So, there's that one. So far, I'm I'm I've really been happier with the birds that I've raised myself than the ones I've I've bought. Um, the ones I bought being that one there that I just showed you, and the one with the white flights, and then I bought three. So I'm trying to think of which one was the other one that I bought. It might have been one of these blue bars it'll it's probably wearing the exact same band though 
it's not the same series. If I pick them all up and look, it'll be a different series band, but they're all they're all blue because it was at our auction. So it's good. It has one of our club bands on. They they all do. So I don't remember. I'll look. But uh, I don't know. One of these is one that I bought at the auction. I want to say it might be that one right there. I don't know. Oh well. I'm just I'm just kind of dragging this out and rambling on now. I've got waters to fill up and everything, so I'll I'll probably turn this back on when I put them away. Though maybe I'll set the camera on the ladder and let y'all watch them all go in. Hopefully they go in pretty well. They did last time, and that was the first time, so I, I imagine they'll go in well this time. But we'll see. Also, just I don't I don't let them go through that door either. Um, just because that's my door that I go in and out of. I don't want them learning they can come out of it. So, I, I don't let them out. They, they out through that. They only come out through the trap. There, there, there went again. That bird just landed out in the yard again. I don't know what's up with that thing, but... I'll, I'll probably let y'all watch the video. put these guys away now. Some of them are already thinking about going in. I know they're hungry, but I've got those traps um, set pretty low, pretty close to the um, to the doorway itself. That's just because there's no boards on the sides in there, and I found that they're still able to um, to get out. A little slower than I'd like, but they're all staying right there and they're all going in. So if I had those doors wide open or, or even just the traps set a bit higher, they'd go in pretty easy. But uh, I just don't want to take a chance of any flying back out. So they'll go in though.
Well, that took a little longer than I uh, expected it to, but um, that's just because of the way I had the trap set. So, I, I'm going to um, put boards in here. I'll, I'll just show you. I threw this D-clip at that pigeon and just about lost it. That's why I was staring at the ground there. They're all in here except for that one that kept landing in the grass. I don't know. I don't have a clue where it is. But I, there's no boards. So I'm going to put boards on the sides like this and that to stop them from being able to have their wings open at this point. So with it like that, they can still get it through there. In fact, and I'm not positive they can't get back out with it like this. But I'm just, just hoping. So. Anyways, they're all in there except that one that he was laying in the grass, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I count nine. There should be ten. I was counting twelve earlier, but that's because I was including the uh, two that are more like pets, uh, which are over there eating the driveway. So uh, it's slow going, but they're uh, they're working on getting rid of the driveway. You know, one peck at a time. But uh, yeah, I don't have a clue where that other one is, so. I'm just going to finish filling up waters like I was doing, and uh, hopefully it shows up. I had forgotten that I had their uh, food thing sitting out. Usually I would just sprinkle the food in there, but there was still some food in it this morning. Or no, not this morning, last night. Last night I fed them, and I knew I was feeding them too much, but I just let them eat as much as they wanted. And then once they were done, I just took it out, so they hadn't had any food today. They had all night to work on, you know, digesting the food I gave them last night, and then no more food today. So, um... So it was just sitting over here, and I just knocked this wire, the wire cage over on top of it so they couldn't get at it. So that's why I had to sprinkle the food, and I got too much. There's still some there. I may feed them some more, actually. It might not be too much. But, uh, why that's like that. So a little unorthodox. But, uh, and you could see some of them were trying to go under here and eat the food. Um, I used to, I put wire around this one to stop birds from being able to get underneath it. And it's, it's not been a huge deal, um... What what the problem was that they were going under there and eating food when I just had them out sitting around like this not doing anything um, And that's not a problem anymore because the chickens eat the food out from underneath the loft So I haven't put wire down there or anything and it's too high up for anything to hide under there and try to get them so There's not a real need for the wire, but if they trapped in faster It wouldn't have mattered, but I don't want them learning that habit to eat down there but you could see, even with me uh, deliberately scaring them out from under there, it didn't, they didn't, you know, fly off or anything. So, that was good. And you could see that one blue bar that had done it the most was just walking around out here wanting to go in there. So, I don't know. I'm going to finish these things up and uh, see if that other pigeon shows up. I mean, it, it's, it's not far away. I'm sure it's just sitting in the grass here somewhere. I'll walk around and see if I can't figure out where it is. And I'm going to put those two All right, away. now, it's uh, pretty dark now. It's probably 20, 25 minutes past sunset. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I would have made done this when you could see me better, but I was just waiting to see if that uh, splash pigeon had showed up, and that's why I'm not looking at the camera really. I'm looking past you guys. But uh, but no, I looked around. I couldn't find it. It hadn't shown up. Everyone else is in there. You all saw they all trapped in fine, except that blue bar wanted to eat underneath the loft. But I don't know what happened to it. I'm sure it's not too far away. I, I hope it didn't land right beside something somewhere and a cat got it at it or something wouldn't be good but uh i don't know it might just be sitting in the tall grass somewhere i've i've been around my yard my neighbor's yard looking to see if i couldn't find it but oh well hopefully it'll show up in the morning i've still got the traps open uh so it can still go in of course tomorrow everybody will be dove hunting again uh including myself i'll be out dove hunting tomorrow morning so um we'll see but hopefully y'all enjoyed that. I wasn't really planning to do a video this evening, but uh, I was just letting them out. I wasn't planning to do a video until I was actually flying them. And I, when I do a video where I clean out the loft and get everyone moved around and get the get the homers flying. Of course, I'm not making them fly yet. I'll, I'll probably do it like this a couple more times before I make them fly at all. Um, you know, I want them going in good. You know, I, I'm sure I won't be flying them until... I don't know, next week or so. But uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed that though. I rambled on a little bit, but uh, but um, I just I just got my work schedule and uh, I work every evening this week except Friday. So I may fly them 
Friday. I could let them out in the mornings, but I don't want to. Uh, just because they're more likely to have, encounter a hawk in the mornings. And of course, they're not strong at all. Uh, nor are they well trained. Uh, plus, it's dove season, so probably won't be doing a lot with them this week. But, that's okay. I might let them out in the afternoons. They'll be less likely to fly then anyways. But, um, yeah. But I'll, I'll, I may, uh... I may do all that stuff I was wanting to do Friday, getting everybody switched around. I think those young homers should be old enough to be moved to this loft, and, and uh, those young rollers uh, big enough to be moved to the gray loft, and uh, just get everybody switched around, get white homers paired up, so, so ho hopefully Friday. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed that, so thanks for watching, uh, and be sure to leave in the comments any name suggestions for that one pigeon. So. Have a good evening, y'all.